okay welcome back uh, we were discussing events right uh, so we defined events as uh, subsets of uh, omega which are of interest right so this is a very loose and informal I mean nobody would think that this is a mathematical definition so it's just some uh, plain english kind of a definition for now right so we have been trying to formalize uh this what is it that we actually mean by events right so we have this sample space omega which contains all the possible elementary outcomes of a random experiment and we are looking at uh, subsets of the sample space we said that all events are uh, in fact subsets of omega but not all subsets of omega are necessarily considered events right so this is not a point you may fully appreciate at this point but we are building towards understanding this right so one structure we impo is imposed uh, for events uh, yesterday was that if a was an interesting event a complement should be an interesting interesting and if similarly if a and b are events if they are interesting then a union b should be interesting right uh, and so this led to the structure called algebra right so an algebra f0 is nothing but a collection of subsets of omega which are closed under complementation and finite unions or also under finite intersections because of de morgan's laws right so we argued yesterday that the structure of an algebra sometimes falls a little bit short of being able to describe uh, events of day to day interest right so we had given example in terms of this tossing a coin until you get a head you know and we looked at the event uh that is even a number of tosses right so and that was not easy to describe in terms of the algebra itself so it turns out that to do an interesting probability theory to build a rich theory you need a little more than the structure of an algebra all right uh so that is so all of uh, probability theory works with a, st a slightly stronger structure known as a sigma algebra right so a sigma algebra is nothing but a collection of subsets again of omega which are not just closed under finite unions but closed under countably infinite unions okay countably infinite unions not necessarily closed under arbitrarily infinite unions but countably infinite unions okay so that's what brings us to the concept of a sigma algebra okay so let me write down the definition of a sigma algebra a collection f of subsets of omega is called a sigma algebra if null set is in f to if a is in f then a complement is an f finally so these two are the same as in an algebra right the last axiom of last axiom of the sigma algebra is different from the axiom of an algebra okay if a1 a2 dot 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 is a countable collection of subsets in f then union ai then f okay so that is the definition of a sigma algebra okay so again so this is scripted f right as i said uh, we we denote uh, collections of subsets collections of sets using scripted letters so we use f scripted f for a 
sigma algebra and these two are the same. So, if the null set should be in f always uh, if a is in f then a complement should be in f and the only difference with an algebra is that if you are given any countable collection right, of subsets in omega the union of those subsets countable union of those subsets must be in f. Okay. So, uh, there is one little point uh, about say in a notational sense. So, this union right. So, if you look at the write up I had in the set theory uh, bit. So, so this is really interpreted as union i belongs to n. So, they had a little remark in the write up we had uploaded on set theory. So, this is simply. So, this is not like you are you are not unioning a 1 then a 2 then a 3 and so on all right. This should be interpreted as the set of all elements contained in at least one of the a i's. Okay. This should not be interpreted as some limit of some finite union or any such thing. Okay. There is no such notion right. So, this is this is better interpreted like this right. It is union over all a i's i belong to n which means this is the collection of all little omegas contained in at least one of the AIs, right? Okay, so uh, that is just an aside. Uh, so this, these three constitute the axioms of a sigma algebra. Okay. Okay, so it turns out that this structure is enough, right? You need so as I mentioned that the structure of an algebra falls a little bit short of what we actually need to build a very interesting theory of probability. Uh, it turns out that as soon as you impose closure under uh, countable countably infinite unions it is enough to develop a very rich theory of probability okay so all of probability theory uh, works with a sample space under sigma algebra of subsets defined on the sample space okay so you can also show by the way so exercise you can also show that uh, if a i so this is all so are uh, subsets in f then you can show that that intersection is also in f using de morgan's laws again okay fine is this clear so you apply this and that together you will get the fact that uh, the sigma algebra is closed under countable intersections as well yes uh huh even then this countable notion will work that is okay. That is okay. So, one thing I want to make very clear is that see f naught both the algebra and the sigma algebra right. They I am not saying that for example, that an algebra should only contain finitely many subsets that is not what I am saying. It can have any number of subsets, but it should be closed under finite unions. Similarly, a sigma algebra can contain any number of subsets. It can even be an uncountable infinity of subsets, but it should be closed under countable unions right you can have uh, even uncountable number of subsets in it. So, this f may have an uncountable infinity of subsets of omega in it right, but it should be closed under countable unions that is all we are imposing. Okay. I am not saying for example, that the cardinality of f is countable or any such thing no right it should be closed under countable unions okay. is this clear everybody. So, this is very easy to show this is a very simple exercise. So, uh, one thing you can uh, show also is that uh, a sigma algebra. So, this is one exercise number 2 a sigma algebra is also an algebra. Okay. So, we are, what we are saying is that a sigma algebra is a strictly stronger structure than a well yeah we will not say that it is strictly stronger structure I am saying now that every uh, sigma algebra is a algebra which means that 
if you have closure under countably infinite unions you will have closure under finite unions why you can always take beyond uh, so let us say you can take uh, a i's beyond a n you can take all the a i's as null sets right and you will have closure under finite unions right you just take after a n plus 1 onwards you take as null sets right then you will get closure under finite unions right. So, is so is this is ok right this is very easy to show it is a very simple exercise you will show it ok. Uh, what what turns out is it is not very it is not entirely trivial to show that there are algebras which are not sigma algebras ok. Uh, so, that is an exam we will see an example in the first homework ok, but the converse is not true the converse to this is not true not every algebra is necessarily a sigma algebra every sigma algebra is necessary in algebra ok. So, uh, the converse is not true and so in order to show that not every algebra is a sigma algebra you just need to produce an example right we will see one such example in the homework ok slightly non trivial, but you will see in the homework if you do the homework you will see ok. So, is this ok everybody with me any questions. So, uh, subsets so an another terminology uh, subsets in F are called F measurable sets. Okay. It is just another terminology ok. So, omega is a sample space and you are collecting subsets of omega and you make a sigma algebra f and depending on what that sigma algebra is uh, elements of that f are called f measurable sets ok and there are subsets of omega which may not be in f right those are not called f measurable sets those are just some subsets of omega right. So, there are some examples. So, if you have some trivial examples of sigma algebra, we can give all right. Some non trivial examples we will see later. So, the most trivial sigma algebra in some in any uh, uh, sample space omega is that right. So, it is a collection of subsets of omega only containing the null set and the sample space itself. Okay, this is a sigma algebra right it is a very 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 trivial example right it is uh, it is of no use in most situations, but it is a sigma algebra right this is one such example. So, I am just trying to say that you can build many sigma algebras for a given sample space all right and which sigma algebra you want to work with again depends on what you are interested in ok. So, not only is it your responsibility to build a sample space based on uh, the outcomes of the random experiment it is also your responsibility to decide what you are interested in and what uh, subsets of omega you want to in you want to include in your f all right. So, another such example is so you may for example, just say phi some event a some subset a a complement and omega right. this is also a sigma algebra actually they are also algebras because they are sigma algebras right. So, here what are you saying here there is other than phi and omega which is always there in the sigma algebra uh, there is one more event one more subset a which is of interest to me. So, I am including a, but if I have to include a I have to include a complement right. So, this is another sigma algebra this corresponds to only one interesting event other than the null set a right and its complement ok. At the other end of the spectrum is 
2 power omega. What is 2 power omega? That of all possible subsets of the sample space, right? Include all possible subsets of omega, right? So, if omega is natural numbers, for example, it will include all possible subsets of natural numbers, okay? So, if omega is n, f will be in this case, f will be 2 power n, right? So, you can see already that 2 power n is an uncountable collection of subsets, right? But we are only imposing closure under countably infinite unions, not necessarily uncountable unions, or you know, it is just closed under you are imposing only closure under countably infinite unions. And there is everything in between, right? So, this is completely trivial. This sigma algebra just has one event. If you want two events A and B, you will have A, B, A union B, A intersection B, and all their complements, right? And then omega, right? That is that is how you would do it, right. And at the other end of the spectrum, at the very end of, so this is the biggest sigma algebra that you can def define on omega, right. And it consists of all possible subsets of omega, the sample space, right. So, given, so which one you choose depends on what you are interested in again, okay. Yes. It is not true, an algebra is not a sigma algebra, we will give an example. See in these cases they are all, they are both algebras and sigma algebras, these very simple cases, but they you can construct examples where an algebra is not a sigma algebra, it is possible, okay, we will see in the homework, okay, these are trivial examples. Okay, so now that brings us to the, so this brings us to the question, so if I choose f is equal to 2 power omega, right, I can say that all subsets are interesting to me. Right. So, in some sense, this may be the if I can choose f is equal to 2 power omega and include all subsets of omega as being interesting, as being f measurable, right, then I can talk about all possible subsets as being interesting and eventually assign probabilities to them, right. So, that is what I am heading towards. The only issue is this, okay, this is again an issue you will not appreciate now. When omega, when the sample space is finite or countably infinite, then you can actually afford to take f is equal to 2 power omega, include all subsets in the sigma algebra and still do a, still assign probabilities to them, okay. So, for countable sample spaces, both finite and countably infinite sample spaces, you can actually assign probabilities to all subsets of the sample space. It is possible to do that. I will. We will get to the, all this, right? I'm. I'm just giving you a preview now. But if omega is uncountable, right? If omega is uncountable, like zero one interval or uh, real line or something like that, then the power set of that uncountable set is too large a collection to assign probabilities to. Okay. This is again something you will not appreciate now. Uh, it is not possible. Uh, to always assign probabilities to all possible subsets of let us say the real numbers, uncountable sets, okay. Therefore, this problem arises, okay. You cannot always take f equal to 2 power omega, okay. Especially when omega is uncountable, you would have to settle for a sigma algebra which is smaller, okay. This is something uh, you will you will appreciate a little more later, okay. Otherwise, we can see if this problem never arose, we, we will we arise this, we will never, we will just keep uh, f s all subsets of omega, right. I want to keep, ideally I do not want to throw anything out, right. But all this machinery becomes necessary only because it is not possible to do a interesting probability theory, a consistent probability theory uh, for certain uncountable sample spaces, okay. So, now another Uh, definition. So, omega f is called a measurable space. Again, another terminology, okay. So, at the beginning we will introduce a bunch of terminologies. So, what is a measurable space? It is a, it is some set omega endowed with a sigma algebra of subsets, 
right the pair omega comma f is called a measurable space okay this f can be any sigma algebra it doesn't have to be any of these particular ones or you know it doesn't have to be any particular sigma algebra on omega as so as long as you endo omega with some sigma algebra f this omega f is called a measurable space okay so the one thing that you should know about uh, probability theory is that it is actually just a special case of measure theory okay and probabilities are simply special cases of measures okay which is why some people talk of probability measure now have you heard that have you heard that terminology you don't just say probability but say probability measure right so it is a special case of a mathematical concept called a measure which we will define very soon okay okay so let's define a measure this is definition okay so measure is a function mu from f to 0 infinity included such that mu of phi is always 0 and number 2 if a1 a2 dot 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 is uh collection of disjoint f measurable sets then the measure of the union countable union of a i is equal to okay so that is the definition of a measure okay yeah so it's a mapping from uh, so you are given some measurable space omega comma f right and so this measure is a function from f to 0 infinity infinity included okay so it can actually take values so it can take any real value or it can take the value plus infinity so it's not just a real valued function it's an extended real valued function so it takes values from 0 infinity included okay and so what does this mean you are assigning measures to what subsets not all subsets of uh, omega i want to make this very clear only f measurable subsets okay so measures are assigned not to all subsets of omega but to those subsets which you have decided to include in your sigma algebra right which is a judgment call you already made let us say depending on what you think is in interesting to you you've created some sigma algebra f and you say omega f is my measurable space why is it called a measurable space i am going to put measures on this space right something you can put what is a measurable space after all it's something you can put a measure on right that's why it's called a measurable space so very uh this is actually fairly fairly simple definition so it's it takes as input f measurable sets and produces a 
real number or plus infinity positive real number or plus infinity right and does not take negative values that is all it takes all values from 0 to plus infinity. We must necessarily have that the measure of the null set is 0. Okay. Now, so this null set remember this null set is an f say which is why we impose this condition no remember this. So, the null set is always f measurable right and that is specific f measurable set phi has measure 0 always okay, it is one of the axioms of measure. <coughs> okay. The second axiom of measure is known as the countable additivity axiom. Okay. So, this says that if I have a bunch of a countable collection of disjoint f measurable sets. Then the measure of the countable union is equal to the sum of the individual measures. Okay, see, these a i's are after all f measurable, so mu of a i is well defined, right? Is some uh, positive number, right? <coughs> and also, since a i's are f measurable, the countable union is f measurable, right? So mu is also defined for the countable union right so and the axiom imposes that if you take disjoint ai so if i have some big sample space omega and i have disjoint events disjoint f measurable sets a disjoint means they don't have each of these uh, ais have null intersection correct so ai intersection aj is null for all ij that's what disjoint means right so if i take the measure of the union of ais right so i am only drawing a finite number of them obviously but there are actually a countably infinite number of these ais they are all disjoint pairwise right and if i take the measure of all these guys the union of all that guys is equal to the addition of the measures of each of them it's actually very intuitive come to think of it think of measure as something that says how much is contained in there or something like that right so, if they are disjoint I want to be able to add the measures right. So, there are th there are these two axioms ok yes. No, no, no I am talking about the generic measure ok. A measure is a function from your so, it is a function that maps f measurable sets to 0 infinity and you impose two conditions right one is that the null set should have 0 measure the other is that if I have disjoint a countable so the countable union of disjoint uh, f measurable sets the measures can be added up right this axiom if you note down is called the countable additivity axiom ok this is a very this is actually the function this is the most important one right this is a fairly trivial one uh, this is the more most important property of a measure. Now, the triple uh, you just let us say the triple omega f mu right. So, now you have defined some measure on this measurable space. So, you started with omega and then you endowed it with a sigma algebra f. So, this this pair you called a measurable space in anticipation that you are going to put a measure on this space. Now, that you put a measure on this space, this is called a measure space. Okay, now, it's, it has a measure. Okay. Okay, a measure space. So, what is a measure space? It is a triple consisting of a set, a sigma algebra on that of subsets and then a measure defined on the f measurable sets. Right, so this property should be satisfied for that. Good. So so far, okay. We've actually defined a bunch of things, which are actually conceptually fairly simple. Okay, just that the thing is very abstract at this point. 
right? You probably do not have very concrete examples. I am deliberately keeping it abstract because we can then once we develop the property, develop a proper theory, we can give number of examples and make uh, several special cases, all right. <coughs> so far, logically everything is okay. All right. So, now remember that see this phi is in the sigma algebra, right, always, and therefore omega is also, also in the sigma algebra, right. So, the whole space is always f measurable, omega is always f measurable. So, omega must have a measure associated with it because I cannot leave out any f measurable set, correct. So, mu of omega is well defined, correct. So, if mu of omega, so what value can mu of omega possibly take? Hmm? No, I mean I have not said anything about it, right. So, mu is just a, so mu maps f measurable sets to 0, infinity, infinity included, correct. So, it could be that this is finite, right. So, this is again something very intuitive, right. If you if you so happen if it so happens that your mu assigns only a finite value to the entire space, then it is called a finite measure, okay. And similarly, if this is equal to infinity plus infinity, then mu is called a mu is called an infinite measure, all right. So, if mu of the entire sample space is plus infinity, then you say the measure is an infinite measure, okay. If it is something finite, you say it is a finite measure, right. And then finally, the, the, the case that is of most interest to us is if mu of omega equal to 1, right. It can take any real value. It can be finite or infinite. If it is finite, you say it is a finite measure. A finite measure in particular if omega is equal to 1, then it is called a probability measure, okay. So, in that sense, a probability measure is a very special case of a measure. It is a finite measure in particular with which assigns 1 as the measure to the entire sample space, okay. So, that is really all there is to it, okay. And so, in this sense, probability theory is a special case of this measure theory, okay. So, but so this is not a course on measure theory, right. This is a course on probability theory. So, we will not go on and on about uh, 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 what we generic measure spaces. We will study uh, probability measures in greater detail, okay. So, in particular when mu is a probability measure, when mu of omega is equal to 1, we will no longer call it mu, we will call it p, okay. And we will say omega f p, okay. And we will not call it a measure space, we will call it a probability space, okay. So, we because we are studying probability, I want to write it down, so that there is no further confusion. So, a probability measure so, I have already defined what a probability measure is, but I want to do it again, right, just because this is so important. A probability, probability, a probability measure, it is denoted by P with two lines, okay, standard notation, okay. 
p on omega f is a function p mapping f measurable sets to what does it map to 0 1 now okay satisfying uh, is a function that satisfies P of null is equal to 0, P of omega equal to 1, and then if A1, A2 dot 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 are disjoint. F measurable sets then probability of union I equals one to infinity A I is equal to sum over i equals 1 through infinity <coughs> probability of a i ok. So, this is just a repeat of what you have seen. So, a probability measure is nothing but a special case of a measure with this additional property. So, the only difference between a measure and a probability measure is that probability has this property an ordinary measure need not have this property. This measure can be anything, anything positive. It can be a positive real number or plus infinity. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, there is one thing I would like to uh, point out again. So, this is an important matter. It's, it could cause confusion. <coughs> so, this I said, right. So, if you have this union i equals 1 to infinity or a better notation in my opinion is union i belongs to n a i right. So, this is the set of all omegas contained in at least one of the a i's right. So, this union is a is not defined in terms of some finite union going bigger and bigger or anything like that. However, this summation right this is an infinite summation right infinite summation is actually the limit of a finite summation. So, this is like limit n tending to infinity summation i equal to 1 to n probability of a i. Okay. Now, if you write down an infinite summation, the question that comes to your mind is does it converge right. I have happily written down this summation, this summation etcetera. These are infinite summations right. You have to I mean to make in order for this to make sense you have to argue that this is in fact well defined right. Why is this well defined? Yeah, no, see uh, when you write a summation like this, the one thing you do not want is see you do not mind if it goes off to infinity, and then you call this whole summation equal to infinity, right. So, you do not want this summation to be something undefined, right. If you like if you write down i equal to 1 to infinity uh, minus 1 power i or something like that, for example it is something that keeps jumping right. So, that summation is not defined at all, but such a situation does not arise here. Why not? Hmm? Ha, ha, ha. So, each yes, 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 yes. So, mu of a i is always non negative. Okay. So, if you write down, so if you really interpret this, this summation is nothing but limit n going to infinity uh, summation i equals 1 through n u of a i correct. So, this is the definition of the infinite sum. So, what I am saying is that 
if you look at that as a sequence in n call it some x n or something it is a monotonically increasing monotonically non decreasing sequence in n. So, monotonically non decreasing sequence has to either converge or go off to infinity which also is in some sense converge right what it does not do is oscillate or do any such thing. So, if mu is were not positive you cannot have this being well defined right. Similarly, for probability measures okay. again this is a well defined summation except what you are constrained here is that after all what is on the left should also be at best 1 right you cannot the, the mapped values can never exceed 1 right. So, you have to have a situation where the summation is not only well defined it has to be at most 1 cannot be bigger than 1 right ok good. <coughs> and finally, uh, omega f p is called a probability space ok. Okay, so, we have come 3 steps right. So, what is the probability space? So, you start off with a random experiment and collect all its possible elementary outcomes and make your sample space and then <coughs> you collect subsets of the sample space which you think are interesting which you are interested in assigning probabilities to, probabilities to all right and you endo omega with a sigma algebra of subsets of omega all right. And finally, so then omega f will be a measurable space then you finally, assign probability measures which satisfies these rules these axioms. So, these are called axioms of probability then these two are called axioms of measure ok these three are axioms of probability ok. So, you end up with a probability measure right and this triple omega f p is called a probability space ok this is where everything begins with. So, this is the beginning of uh, what we are going to build up on. So, this one thing I want to make clear. So, this does not tell you so none of this what we have to uh, what we have developed here tells you how to generate these f or how to assign probabilities right. It does not tell you how to do this it is up to you right, but if you were to do it it just tells you the rules you have to satisfy within these rules you can do whatever you want you can create any f you want satisfying those rules you can create any p you want satisfying these rules right. But how you do this how exactly you do this is up to you depends on your intention right or depends on what you want to model or what you want to capture right. So, it just gives you a framework it does not give you answers immediately right if you supply some numbers to the theory it will give you some other answers that is all ok. So, you it is your responsibility to create f create p etcetera ok. So, questions. How could we do assign to elements of sigma or to subsets of sigma? Uh, so, as I said it is a map from f to 0 1 right. So, it takes as inputs f measurable sets right. So, in the specific case of a probability so, if you have so, now we are after all the story we are ready to give a uh, precise definition of what an event is right if omega f p right if you are looking at a probability space f measurable sets are called events that is all there is to it ok. So, you go and put a sigma algebra on omega depending on what is interesting to you right whatever you include in your f is an event what you do not include in f is not an event it's as simple as that ok. So, let me just write that down as well. So, if omega f p is a probability space so f measurable sets are called events 
So, now you have a very precise understanding of what events are. So, so far we have been giving some wishy washy definition that oh, they are subsets of sample space which are of interest to you, right. Now, this is the correct definition, right. So, in, in a general measure space, so in a general measurable space, you have omega f mu, right, some measure, and the elements of f are called f measurable subsets of omega. And in the specific case of a probability space, you do not say f measurable set, you say it is an event. Right? Okay. So there's no there's no difference between f measurable sets and events as far as probability spaces are concerned. Okay. Is that clear to everybody? That is not true. So, we are saying probabilities to those sets that are in f. F is a f is a sigma algebra on omega, right. You are saying probabilities to only those subsets of omega which are in f. So, that f will always contain phi and omega and it may contain other it will contain other subsets so presumably, but it will not necessarily contain all subsets of omega right unless your f itself is 2 power omega. See f is a collection of sets it is not a subset of omega it is a collection of subsets of omega right. So, unless f itself f is 2 power omega you will not be assigning probabilities to all subsets of omega right. What I was saying a little earlier was that when omega is countable finite or countably infinite you can actually afford to take f as 2 power omega and you can assign it is actually possible to assign probabilities to all subsets of the sample space right when omega is countable. But when omega is uncountable it turns out that if you take f equal to 2 power omega assigning probabilities consistently to all subsets of something like a real line is not always possible. Okay, this is not something you will understand now. Okay, I will. This is an impossibility theorem, okay, which is a non-trivial theorem. Uh, so, if you are working with an uncountable sample space omega, which is like say like real number or 0, 1 or something like that, then you have to define a sigma algebra on omega, which is smaller than 2 power omega. Okay, so how you do that is the interesting part. Okay, so that we will get to later. Uh, so, so far, any question? Any other questions? Yes. Even for countable infinite uh, sample space, mm -hmm. power set will be uncountable. Ah, so, that is true. So, if omega is countable, let us say omega is n, for example, we know that 2 power omega is 2 power n. So, a, f will have uncountably many subsets, but that is ok. I am saying if omega itself is uncountable, then it is 2 big 2 power omega is even bigger in some sense. So, if omega is 0 1 for example, or r 2 power r is a is a collection of subs all subsets of r right that is a very huge collection of subsets and it is too difficult it is in many cases it is impossible to assign pro interesting measures on it. Yes, if omega is countably infinite also you are fine either omega is finite no problem omega countably infinite no problem. It does not matter that f has uncountably many subsets omega if it is uncountable. If the sample space is uncountable you get into trouble ok. So, it is you have to be much more careful. So, probability theory is actually very easy when omega is countable if it is either finite or countably infinite probability theory is very easy because you can take f as 2 power omega and assign probabilities to all subsets of sample space which is what you are actually used to right. But if omega is uncountable you get into trouble ok that is something you may not have studied in elementary courses. Okay. So, I just want to make sure I am done with everything I want to say here. Uh, yes, we have defined probability space, uh, event is ah, so an F measurable set is called an event. Yeah, so are there any other questions? Ah. 
Well, all of measure theory is right. So measure theory is a very important branch of mathematics in itself, and the only thing that's not included is this. A mu of omega can be anything, anything positive or plus infinity. Probability theory is a special case of measure theory, uh, but it's also a very interesting special case. It's a very important special case. But measure theory, in, in its own right, is a very important part of mathematics. Right. So things like, so even things like length, area, volume, these are all examples of measure. Okay. They just so the concept of a measure generalizes things like length, area, volume, etc. in into arbit into arbitrary measure spaces, right? I mean, satisfying certain properties. Okay. So it's a very important area of mathematics. Is there anything else? Okay. So we will stop the lecture here. So I want to find out if. Uh